There's no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 50. 16601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. Oh, I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello. No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next gen perimeter protection, 24 7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield Security System and doorbell camera, all professionally installed for free. When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Or Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. More tables, more entertainment. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call 954-966-4646. Welcome, Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop.
viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. All righty. Good morning, boys and girls. Yes, sir. It is Friday. Big day today. Huge day today. And it ain't about any sorry-ass playing game by the Heat. I don't give a shit about that. That's, you know, I I care. I want to watch it and all that. And I hope they win. But, yeah, no, no. It's about the having today, baby. We've been waiting. This is a four-year thing. You know, every four years, we put some shit bag in the White House. Doesn't matter if he's Republican or Democrat. Well, you know, it's not really something I look forward to every four years. This I've been waiting for for four years. So it's just kind of nice, you know, by the way, anybody like took a little bit of that dip last night in 5960. I did, although I was waiting for it to go a little deeper into 59 because it went to like 59.5 and uh, and then it just took off and uh, now it's at 65. So I don't know. And so it's it's interesting. The having is tonight around 830, nine o'clock, something like that. And uh, you're you're now flirting back with the all time high of 67, eight, I think it was. And then the real all time high is 73, seven right now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, I don't think it's going to be like here comes the having and then goes like this parabolic rise. or whatever. No, but we're we're going to bounce back now. And 90 is the next stage. 85, 95, right around there. We're going to be in that window. 90, we'll go right in the middle. But uh, that's the next stage. It's going to, it's about to pop. It's about to pop. So anybody that took advantage last night, I was watching. I sent a couple of my friends uh, a little warning. Yo, we're in the, we're in the buying zone again. So we'll see. I, I, I can't wait to show you you know, the the experiment that I did for you guys during this dip alone, our investment, and then you're going to see the profits and everything at the same time. So it's uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, we'll show you because we did, uh, we purchased just over 2K of Bitcoin in this dip right here. Just this dip here. We, we, uh, uh, most of that money I was going to use for altcoins and probably make more money in the, in the bull run here. But I wanted to experiment and show you guys because it doesn't matter where it dips. You're going to have an opportunity to make some money. So we did like a little bit over 2K of an investment. And we're going to show you the profits now when this thing takes off. You're going to go, whoa, wow. But okay, my bank account doesn't do that. My savings account doesn't do that. My money market account doesn't do that. In fact, nothing I invest in does that. And look at the stage it's in. So because too many people are like they think they got in too late. So tonight is really exciting because the the having cuts the the amount of Bitcoin that is mined daily from 900 to 450. And these ETFs are chewing up more than that every day on average. On top of that, Hong Kong gets online on the 30th of this month. So they're going to start buying and then Japan's going to start buying and then and the Arab nations still haven't gotten in and Europe hasn't gotten full board. So it's just, it's going to be this buildup now and it's going to explode and people are going to freak out. The, the general public, a lot of you will start getting in when it goes to 90 and hundred, you know, after the fact. So not when I told you at 16 or 18 or 20 or 25, you know what? I love the idiot that reaches out. Oh, it's a fraud. Well, wait a minute, dude. If you listen to me and you bought it at 20 and you sold it at 40, what's so fraudulent about it? You made double your money and you're out. If you listen to me and bought it at 25 and sold it at 50, you doubled your money, you're out. If you listen to me and you bought it at 30 and you sold it at 60, you doubled your money and you're out. 
you know, so there's plenty of opportunities to double your money if you wanted to. Now, if you bought it at 16 and you hold it now at 65, oh my God, your money is four or five times now. Pretty good. So it, it, it can't be fraudulent if I gave you something early and you had plenty of time to make money and get out if you wanted to. Stupid people get out. Like the people that have sold here right before the having, oh my God, these are morons. But you know, unless it's an emergency, you need the money. Hey, you need the money. That can happen to all of us. I see Ocala Joe. Ocala Joe, once again, I want to thank you, sir. Appreciate you and Lourdes, your wife, coming by and saying hi to us at Hialeah Park. I appreciate it. I always love it when you guys come by. You know, I, I should have brought you guys some 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 big old t-shirts. So, you know, do me a favor, Ocala Joe. How about this? Let's make a deal. Send me your address where I can mail you and Lourdes a big old t-shirt. Okay, I'm going to mail you guys a, uh, a pair of big O T-shirts. Do me a favor. All right. Send me a message and send me your address in that message. And I'll send you a pair of big O T-shirts. OK, we'll mail them out to you. I'll have the wife mail them out to you. Uh, let's see if you didn't take advantage of the dips, you'll regret it soon. I'm ready for this to start booming. Oh, thanks again. You're welcome, my brother. You're welcome. All of you are welcome. Those of you are that are, you know, you got in early with me and then I told you about it. You're all still way in the green. Even with this dip, you're way in the green still. What you did, if you're smart in this dip, like you bought extra Neutron, you lowered your sailor price, uh, um, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you bought something later. You know, we're going to have David Ferronis at 1030. I didn't mention it to him anymore. But I mentioned to him like Polygon and all that. And when it was like at 90 something cents and a dollar and it went to like a dollar 15 or 20. Now it went down to like 70, 70, some 80. You know, these are opportunities. I'm sure he didn't take advantage. But, you know, just shit like that, man. These are opportunities, you know, and then you could get your Polygon and you can stake it in certain places and earn four or five percent. So it's paying off for itself even more, you know. There's a lot of ways to make money, and it's just, I just wish some of you would take advantage of it. But it is what it is. So today I am excited, super excited, because I've been, this is like our Super Bowl here. This is like, this is when you cross the finish line after guys like Kyle Cockrell and, and, uh, and, uh, what's it called? Um, um, what's, um, what's it called? Ocala Joe and, some of you guys that I know invest, you know, Lisa, you know, guys like that and ladies like that that invest. We've been we've been building up for this and waiting for a couple of years and buying low and holding and hodling. So this is this is the moment, man. This is where this is where we cross the threshold and then we really start to see the explosive movement over the next six to 12 months. This this is where it like. This is the exciting part of it, man. It's going to be absolutely freaking awesome. And then you watch the rest of the world get in because, you know, people will catch up. <laughs> Tons of excitement. There's only more excitement at Canesware right now because they've got their 14th anniversary sale going on. So go see Brett and all the people. they got a ton of sales going on. Remember, use our code BIGO10. You will get 10% off. All right, so Big O10, Canesware, online at canesware.com, or if you go in person. Remember, online, for those of you that want it you know, mailed in, if you order over $99, you will get free shipping. So Jeff, John, all the great people out there at Canesware, man, they're going to get it done for you. So uh, make sure you, uh, you check it out there at Canesware, man. Good people caneswear.com they got anything and everything with the canes logo on it practically dolphins marlins panthers inter heat all kinds of stuff so check it out there at caneswear all right we've got um uh, what's it called uh we've got uh marlins uh had were postponed last night so they will have a double header on saturday today at 220 at wrigley field so we'll get a little afternoon baseball, even if it's bad baseball from the Marlins. Although Lusardo, 
We'll see if he can pitch well. I mean, it's seven seven six ERA hasn't been good. We got the Heat game tonight. No Butler, as you all know, with the MRI and and uh, the sprained MCL, he's done. And uh, no Rozier, so we'll see. Uh, Duncan is kind of questionable. Uh, let's see what we got here. Chat board wise, I see Cosa Nostra is in. What's in store for the weekend? Celebration, baby. Celebration. Everything we've worked so hard for is here. And now is when the real stuff starts over the next six to 12 months. This is what we've been waiting for, bro. So uh, the, the having is here tonight. It's freaking awesome. Anyway, so that's what's in store. Joseph says, with our coach and the true heat culture, I'm confident that Miami won't disappoint tonight. How about you, Big O? I don't have a lot of confidence for tonight. I'm sorry. Maybe Bam shows up. Maybe Tyler shows up. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not counting on him, to be quite honest. What I saw from the Bulls the other night is better than the heat. You know? So, no, I don't have the confidence. I wish I had confidence, but I don't have confidence. Uh, it's been a, a 500 team for 44 games. They have not impressed me in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's some individual things I really like about the team, some of the young guys. Um, they've got solid role players, but, you know, they never really show me this kind of stuff in these kind of moments. Uh, hopefully, you know, they have their moment today. It would be nice. But, you know, you're... I get it. You get into the playoffs, which is cool, but they've got no shot against the Celtics without Jimmy Butler. Zero. They will get swept. It will be an embarrassment watching that series. They're going to run them right off the court. So, uh, no, I don't have confidence. Uh, the spine of that team is gone. There is no spine. I've never seen a spine from Bam or from from uh, from Tyler. I'm still waiting. You know, you idiots out there. Oh, no, wait till Tyler is healthy. He'll do it. No, wait, wait, wait. No, this is Tyler's moment. Oh, no, no. Now this is Tyler. No, yeah, Tyler knows he's got to come through here. No, Tyler will come, you know. So I'm, I'm done with that, dude. I've been done with that for a while now. So a bunch of role players have to win tonight. And so you got you got to hope that a role player or two get get hot tonight. Um there's no leader on that team. Bam's not a leader. Tyler's not a not a leader. Caleb hasn't done enough to become a leader, neither has Triple J, neither is anyone on that team. There are no leaders. There's nobody that says, Jimmy's not here, I'm taking over. There's no guy that is, you know, um, remember that that video of, of uh, Braxton Berrios being held back right outside the Canes locker room? You, you remember that video, right? And it was like a caged animal, you know, because Braxton is that guy that is just like aggressive, right? A tough little guy. Remember that video? For those of you that remember that video, it went kind of viral locally. I don't know. I'm not saying it went national. So a lot of you that don't follow the Canes, you won't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But usually there's like a upstart young player that's hiding behind the star. And he, he's trying to, like, stick his head out there every once in a while during the game. And, and, and the second the, the star sits down, he wants to take over. And you've seen those kind of guys, right? Who's that? Who's that guy on the heat right now that, that is dying to be selfish? Bam has no selfish in him. Every superstar has selfless and selfish in them because there's a moment 
for everything. That's what a star knows. A star knows when he's not going well or she's not going well, but she or he uses their skills to help others because they bring so much attention because they're stars. And then there's these moments where the star knows fucking on. I'm fucking on. Get the hell out of my way. And everybody else on the team knows he's fucking on. Get out of his way. Right? You've heard Doug Collins. All that play was just give it to Michael and everybody get out of the way. You've heard Spo. Yeah, that play was basically give it away and everybody get out of the way. You know, you've seen that before. Different coaches have said that. Yeah, no, no, we were just, hey, no, just feed Marshawn Lynch. It's over. Just keep feeding him. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. Who's that? Who's the guy on the heat? Who's the mother effer that says, hey, guys, so Jimmy's out. Who cares? Yeah, he's awesome. Let's go. I'm going to lead us. Let's go. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Tell me. I'm sitting there outside the uh, hamburger bowling joint. Grease 2. Who, who, who's that guy? Who? Who? Who is it on the Miami Heat? Tell me. I don't know who it is. And so how am I going to have confidence? There's no son of a bitch on the Miami Heat anymore right now. The son of a bitch has got a, an injured knee uh, ligament. That's the And Terry Rozier has SOB in him. He has a little bit of it, actually. And he's out, too, with the neck injury. And so that tells me, I got nothing for you, bro. I got nothing for you. So I'll watch, I'll root, I'll hope for the best, but I'm expecting them to get eliminated by the Bulls. The Bulls are hungry. They want this badly. So we'll see. DeRozan's more of a dog than anybody else that the Miami Heat have. So that's where I stand with the Heat tonight. Um, Steven Gonzalez is in the house. He's got his barbecue ready to go. Let's go, Cats. Yeah, that's right, baby, Sunday. Jay Gelfin is in. If anyone steps up to be a star for the Heat tonight with Jimmy out, or do they step up as a team? Well, you got my take on it, Jay. You know, Kyle Cockrell, Miles Deep is in Vegas. Let's hope that he can pull this one out of their ass. I'm not holding my breath, guys and gals. One-Eyed Jack, the Bitcoin having is upon us. I can't wait. True Fin Fan farted again. Uh, let's see. True Fin Fan, have you been recruited by uh, the Jewish Army? They are now attacking. They might need you. Uh, Alex Palenzuela. Ray Sosa. This is just like last year's playing game against the Bulls where all confidence is gone in the heat. Uh, no Jimmy. That's the difference. No Jimmy. Sneak attack is in. Ray Varnicus. What have you heard from your sources regarding the Dolphin draft? Best player available. Um, brother, when it comes to they are super tight right now, they're not talking draft. Not getting shit out of that place for that. Okay, so Levi, you 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 bought you 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 lowered your on though. You're, you're a stud, bro. You're a stud. You're a freaking stud. That's another one. You know what I mean? I mean, I gave it to you guys a lot lower still, but but it was at ninety and it was at a dollar, and then it went way down. So you took advantage. What is it? It's like a thirty percent drop or something? Good for you, dude. You're a stud. You're a stud, Levi. 
Ocala Joe is in. The wife and I are riding the Bitcoin money train. Have a great show. Damn right. Crypto Fins is in. That's another one taking advantage from the Big Apple via Broward County. Willie is in Colombia. Joey LaSalle, do you have any players you think Dolphins will pick at 21? I've already talked about it uh, several times, dude. I, uh, I'm i a Latou guy. Um, uh, as I've said many, many times, that's the guy that I want the most is Latou. Okay? And if not, then we go offensive linemen, you know, something like that. But Latou is the guy that I want badly at 21. Next week, uh, you're going to have a ton of, of draft talk. We're going to have all kinds of stuff. Uh, so we will, uh, we will, you know, take it to the 10th power next week. I just haven't gone crazy because I don't want to repeat the same shit over and over again every day. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, cut back on dolphin insiders because it just gets redundant and there's just too much and you know not enough like breaking news or anything like that you know what i'm saying i'm the one that provides the most breaking news as it is so it's just that the redundancy is just uh, just too much i'm it, you know i get tired of asking the same question to four different people you know so i just um Sorry, I'm just a different part of my life. That I'm just not going to get bogged down with the same boring minutia and repeat all that shit. So it'll be nice and fresh next week, leading right up to the draft. So that's kind of the way I've done it this year. Uh, bull market about to escalate soon. You know it. You know it. Fernando Perez, Roderick Freeman. I don't see the Heat winning tonight, but if they do, the Celtics have stars, and the Heat only have one star, and they won't be playing. I don't think the Heat have a star anymore. I don't think Jimmy Butler is a star anymore. Let's um, let's cut through the bullshit. Why don't we? Okay. Let's cut through the bullshit. This is a lot of bullshit going on. Jimmy Butler is done, cooked, history in the archives. Are we clear on that? Are we any more clear on that? He's no longer a star. Stars carry you through the regular season and into the postseason. He no longer can do that. He's proven that multiple years now. And karma bit Jimmy Butler in the ass. Why? Because your laziness and because you don't want to work during the regular season, you ended up in the play-in. But if you would have worked hard, and you would have put the time in in the regular season, you would have climbed up on the standings, you would have never played this game, and you would have never gotten injured. Pero quieres ser un descarado, and you want to coast, you want to kick, push, kick, push, and coast in the regular season and do nothing and lay no groundwork and put nothing into the regular season so you get nothing out of the regular season so now it puts you into the most difficult position in the postseason. And guess what happened? You got injured. Meanwhile, the Celtics and all the other teams that earned higher spots and the Pacers and all that, they're all sitting down, relaxing, where you could have been, Jimmy, sniffing coffee beans for days until you had to play again. But karma bit you in the ass. Karma bit the Miami Heat in the ass. Why? Because Jimmy Butler is a broken down player. He only has flashes of brilliance. He no longer is brilliance. He is no longer a star. A star is Tyrese Halliburton, who will carry you all year long. That's a star. A star is Jalen Brunson, who carries you all year long. And Jalen Brunson, se está echando aire for the whole week. Well, Jimmy Butler has to work and get injured. Because you want to be a smart ass. Because you want to be un descarado. Because you want to coast. 
because you want to be lazy, because you don't want to live up to your responsibility. Bro, you signed a contract for an entire year to play games. You did nothing. And guess what? As Mr. Wonka would say, you get nothing. Are we going to be honest? Are we going to talk about what actually happened? Or are you going to sit there and whine like a little bitch that Batum pushed Tyler at half court? How about Tyler actually keeping his little fragile ass on the court so he can help his team not be a play-in team? How about that? You know, the guy that you've been saying you think he's reliable when he never is, and then now when you needed him in a play-in game, he shit the bed. Are we going to be honest here? Are we actually going to talk about it? Because you're not going to hear this on QAM. Nobody's BBs are big enough at QAM to say that, because guess what? I no longer work at QAM. Because I'm the only one that had the balls on a flagship station to say whatever's going on with the Panthers, the Heat, the Marlins, the Dolphins, whatever was on the station. Because, you know, you might have some guys that will dance around it a little bit, but they're not going to talk about it. They're not really going to talk about it. So are we going to be honest? Because that's why you tune in here, because you're not going to get it anywhere else. They're not going to give it to you in the heat minute. They're not going to give you uh, this on Saturday when they're talking about, you know, the heat show. You're not going to get it on the pregame show. Okay? All right? The heat have taken the lazy route, and they got cooked by the lazy route. They got lucky last year with the Giannis injury and everything kind of went their way and they're really not that good. And then by the time they got to the finals, they got treated like what they are. An upstart little team that just surprised everybody and got there, but really didn't belong there. So, you know, let's stop with the bullshit already. Jimmy Butler got what he ended up earning. You know, that's all. You didn't put shit into the regular season, dude. And guess what the regular season turned around and screwed you without Vaseline. You're, it's over. And the run is over. Jimmy Butler's done. Everything is done with Jimmy Butler. It's over. He's no longer a star. There are no stars on this team. And Jimmy Butler, I already killed all of you with the BAM bullshit for years now. All of you with BAM, get your homer ass into the bush. Go disappear already with all your BAM bullshit. He's a super role player, like I've said from day one. Never been a star. And now, no more with Jimmy Butler. He was a star. He can't play like a star. So he, stars don't just show up. They don't take off the regular season and then say, well, I'll show up in the playoffs. That's not what stars do. Sorry. That's not what a star does. So if he can't help you in the standings during the regular season, he's not a star. So if his body can't hold up, he's not a star. And by the way, in the first quarter, what, the steals? Offensively, he didn't look anything. Wasn't doing anything. It was a couple of lazy passes by by uh, by the Sixers that they kept getting burned. And it was like, great, thanks, bro. You guys are kind of stupid. And it's like, focus on your passing. It's like, you know who you're playing? Like, that, that guy's the best at being in the passing lanes. Very few are better than Jimmy Butler doing that. And they kept getting fooled. 
lazy passes. And then Miami did the lazy passing at the end of the game. It's funny because it's like there's a double standard. All oh, the Heat are playing great. Well, yeah, but the Sixers are also turning over the ball with some laziness and all that kind of stuff. But, okay, don't mention it now. Go ahead. And then you see the turnovers at the end for the Heat. And then that was kind of the difference in the game, too. And it's kind of, you know, it, it goes both ways. But some people can't be objective about it. So if you're objective about it, that team's got no stars. It's over. Over. And Jimmy Butler got exactly what he put into the regular season. He put nothing into it, and karma bit him in the ass. Because if he put something into it, he would have been resting, relaxing, sniffing coffee beans. That's what he would have, that's what he was supposed to be doing with the Pacers and the Knicks and the Celtics. They're all sitting there sniffing coffee beans. And now where's Jimmy Butler? Hobbled in a corner with a knee that has a mango in it. So Jimmy Butler got burned by karma. The Heat got burned by karma, an organization that is known for working and everybody working top to bottom. Doesn't matter who is in that organization. They're all exceptional employees. I'm telling you, I've dealt with them for over 30 years. That's one of the best organizations, top to bottom. The people in that organization are exceptional. They've never had an employee like Jimmy Butler. No one is allowed to act like Jimmy Butler because there's no days off for the Miami Heat. Are you kidding me? You ever go meet Tim Donovan and Rob Wilson and company? Those are the hardest working mofos I've ever seen in my life, bro. Meanwhile, the, the top star in the entire organization says F you to the rest of the season. That's unheard of in the Heat organization, dude. So guess what happened now? What they never do bit them in the ass because that's not their culture. Their culture is not taking shit off. Jimmy Butler takes an entire regular season off two years in a row, and it finally bit him in the ass. Let's talk some football. David Ferronis and our Welt and Rayom Miami Dolphins report. All rise, football fans, as the Welt and Rayom Miami Dolphins report with David Ferronis is in session. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They are committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. Here's Miami Dolphins insider, David Ferronis. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, sir. How are you feeling? Good morning, man. Uh, well, after hearing what, uh, everything you were saying about this heat season and the way the, the regular season bit them in the ass, uh, uh, and I'm not feeling as good this morning, but, man, I mean, it, it's true. Am I, I wrong? Mean, Am I wrong? No, absolutely not. They, okay. they kind of played the whole year. Like, like, you've been like on the heat beat. Gonna happen again. You've been on the heat beat many times, right? Uh, I mean, not many times. I, I was uh, I was backup for, for a season. Okay. Um, and have followed them my whole life, so. No, no, but yeah, that doesn't mean shit. I, 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 I love the. No, no, I'm being honest, bro. The part that you were a beat guy. Yeah. You dealt. You dealt with them. As he, just walk me through the employees, the people you deal with every day. Just don't. Just tell me about the employees of the Miami Heat. Uh, I mean, class organization. Uh, people you deal with are all top notch. Everyone across the board. I mean, most. Does it look like Tim Donovan or Rob Wilson ever fucking sleep? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, and, and they are ready to help you at, at at any moment. And then if you screw up and you're late, I be I even had him. Well, I was kind of late, but then uh, they had like moved up the availability, and they were like holding things for me to get there as I was uh, as I was parking one Have time. Have you ever uh, met a more thorough organization than the Miami Heat? Yeah, you can just tell it's top to bottom. That's how they uh, decide to run things. It's, Does anybody 
work like Jimmy Butler in the Miami Heat? Does anybody take six months off? Oh, nah. Do they nah. take six minutes off? <laughs> yeah, all right, let alone. Yeah. I'm, 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 dude, I am serious about this. I have been around these people. This is the best run organization. I've been in this business 34 years. I've seen them all, bro. I don't give a shit if you're the Matadors, you're the Miami FC, you're the, the Magic Jack, you're the Marlins, the Panthers, whatever. Bro, I've done it all. I've covered them all. There's no organization. Yes, I'm, I'm putting everybody in second place. I've never seen an organization top to bottom like the Miami Heat. Ever. Ever. It's not even close. Everyone else has been dysfunctional, screwed up, whatever. The second Riley took over, bro, it was organ, organ, organized. It was perfected. It's been exceptional. And then comes Jimmy Butler. And yeah. he has completely derailed everything that they do. They won't oh. say it. They'll uh, never say it. Let's They'll not go over it. Rails. I mean, Jimmy Butler did get to the 2020 finals, the 23 finals, a game away from the 22 finals. So, I know, I know. Uh, I know. yeah, I mean, th th that four year run exceeded expectations. Uh, so, we can't oh, say. No, that. Yeah, I'm not, say dude, I'm not saying that Jimmy Butler's run wasn't amazing. It's great. It's fantastic. It's whatever, but it's over, bro. It's over already. You know, you, you got by last year, coasting the whole regular season. You got lucky with the Giannis injury and all that stuff. And eventually, you know, you got to the finals, but you didn't belong anywhere on the on that court with that team. So it is what it is. And but you tried to pull the same bullshit again this year, and it burned you, bro. Because this is not the way it goes. You don't coast in the regular season, and all of a sudden, yeah, we're going to go to the finals every year, you know. And, and and then you end up, you know, convincing fans, you know, hypnotizing them. Don't worry. <laughs> don't need to try in the regular season right, we do this yeah it's a way to do it no it's not bro yeah and what hurts even more is that uh the knicks as the two seed were only four games better than the heat so there were so many spots that they could have avoided the play in gotten into matchups again you know like a get into a matchup against a, a Giannis less bucks um you know play the magic or someone in the first round you know even the knicks you handled them last year in the postseason um, and avoid this play in, but then you end up in it, and that's what happens. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. All right, so uh, what are you uh, what are you looking at at twenty one? Finally, what what do you think? Because to me, it looks like they're going to stay there and get a really good player, since all these quarterbacks are going to go early. Oh yeah, yeah. There's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that go. So then, I think that really bodes well to uh, to allow players that maybe otherwise wouldn't go, wouldn't fall to 21 to, to stick around. But still, I think a lot of the targets that we we all know and love that we've talked about uh, uh, with the Dolphins, uh, a lot of them will be gone. Yeah, Garrett Verse will be gone by then. Lyle Tulatu, Byron Murphy. But if one of those guys are, are around, then go for it. But I do like the trade-down scenario if you have multiple offensive linemen like the Jackson Powers Johnson and Graham Barton. I do like to, to try and find a trade-down partner. Uh, I, I know Chris Greer says some of those conversations are taking place now, but then a lot of it happens once actual draft day comes. So I'm sure they've heard from teams that are saying, hey, you know, if we have a certain guy that we're looking at at 21, then we might be giving you a call. And uh, I'd love that it, it, for the Dolphins. If they're able to get a Graham Barton who uh, his uh, athletic style uh, could fit the, uh, the wide zone blocking scheme, uh, and then you can move down and still snag him, and then you add a third-round pick, so you don't have a 100-pick gap between your second-round selection and a fifth-round pick, then uh, I'd love that for the Dolphins as well. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a, 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 an interesting move. I don't know if I want to trade down because I want to get the best lineman I have available at that point, whether it's a pass rusher or an offensive lineman. Uh, that's the only risk that you run because then, you know, if there's two or three guys, but you get the lesser of those three guys, uh, I would be unhappy with that. So um, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson or Guyton, although I'm really hoping Latou is there, bro, because Latou for me would be the perfect addition. You know, unfortunately, uh, Jared Verse is not going to get there. 
Oh, uh, that's for sure. And neither is Brock Bowers. Right, right. That would be that would be nice. Although yesterday the casino manager, uh, Steve Calibro, goes, I think Brock Bowers is going to fall fall to us. And I said to him, well, if Brock Bowers falls to us. I'm taking you to a steak dinner with the wife. Okay, so <laughs> so I hope I hope Brock Bowers. It's going to cost me a couple hundred dollars, but it'll be well worth it. Oh if yeah. Brock Bowers <laughs> lands the dolphin at 21. I'll I'll, I'll pay for because I told them I'll take them to New York Prime. You ever been to New York Prime in Boca? No, no. I, oh. I, I don't get up uh, that way that often. I, I covered FAU for a year, uh, uh, but uh, but then you don't I, travel. I, I, you don't get in a car and go out to. You don't oh. go to or Palm Beach for restaurants, really? I, it, I, I'm I'm in South Dade, so I mean it's kind of it's kind of far for me. But I mean I I've made my way every once in a while to Del Rey, you know uh, the the Av and uh, and Boca as well. But uh, yeah, I mean the same season that I was the backup heat writer, then I was also uh, covering FAU and Lane Kiffin over there. Devin Singletary was on the team. Um, oh, I have, I have no issues driving for a great restaurant. Yeah. I live in West Kendall, dude. I live close to Chrome Avenue. Off. Okay. Of well, yeah. So, so you're farther. No. Yeah. I mean, it's about an hour. Yeah. yeah no. It's 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 def it's like an hour and fifteen minute uh, drive from uh, my house to New York Prime, but it, it is so worth every penny of it, bro. Oh God, that mm, food. Okay. So I have to. I have to try it. Oh man, the and the garlic shrimp is the greatest garlic shrimp I have ever tasted in my entire life. Seriously, that 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 appetizer is gold there at uh, at New York Prime. But anyway, uh, I'm hoping uh, that Latou falls to to Miami, you know, at 21. Um, well, if Latou is there, then uh, I, I'm I'm not, not thinking any trade down scenario. You just pick him up right there in that spot. If a guy like yeah. like Latou is there, go for it. And I think uh, Murphy's probably in that category as well. And then, uh, and uh, Johnny Newton may uh, probably not the same, like where you just don't listen to any calls. Uh, he might be the next one, but also I like that uh, he has the uh, chemistry with uh, with Austin Clark, the Dolphins defensive line coach. He uh, he actually recruited him to Illinois uh, at his job before joining the Dolphins. So uh, there's a little connection for you. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Uh, I, it looks like free agent moves are probably going to wait till after the draft at this point, right? Because it doesn't seem like they're really trying to sign somebody. They might be, you know, talking to people, but it looks like maybe you're waiting to see what you draft and then to fill the next holes in free agency will be after the draft, right? That's kind of what it looks like right now. Yeah, it kind of feels that way. Once you get this close to the draft, you're within a week. And you've talked to some free agents, like, for example, the Odell Beckham Jr. offer we know is on the table, as Mike McDaniel has, has told us, and we know that whole visit weekend and all that. But uh, but even Chris Greer recently told us nothing imminent, so that seems to be the same thing. Like you were saying, nothing imminent a few weeks back, so uh, that seems like uh, it's remained steady the same way. And then now you get to within a week of the draft. Now at this point, you are just – kind of maintaining the same uh, areas of need, not making some late uh, addition, and then just deciding, are you going to the draft with those uh, sort of uh, different positions that you might look into? And then uh, you go from there based on whatever you do end up with in the draft. Then you fill up the holes uh, on the on the back end, uh, which then if you also wait another month, then you get to the post-June 1 money from the Xavier Howard uh, release. So that's an eight, extra $18.5 million that the Dolphins that's have. The two, that's when the two a deal happens. Yeah, just uh, I mean, but just by the, the time on the calendar, I, I don't know if there's any real um, correlation as far as just that. No, uh, it's, it's, just cap space. it's just cap space. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the trigger that now opens it for them to finally finalize that deal and get it done because there was no hurry. You know, it's only media and fan talk. Those 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 sides aren't they know it's going to get done and they got to work out all the minutia and all the bullshit. But they knew that the timeline was going to be in the summer anyways, you know, leading up to training camp. I mean, come on, dude, it's it's common sense. You have other work. I mean, Chris Greer told you guys this week that it's like they even know, hey, we're, you know, we're taking a break in negotiations right now because the draft is is a priority now that's how comfortable that situation is where you've seen yeah. tense situations at times where negotiations are constantly going on no matter what and people are these people are like yeah now we'll take a break yeah it's uh 
it's the draft. We understand you guys got to focus on that. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. there's no even selfishness on one side. No, no, we got to work on this and get this done. You know what I mean? So that's how comfortable they are right now from these two parties. I think parameters are pretty close already, to be quite oh, honest. Oh, and Big O, contrary to popular belief from some, Tua is showing up to off-season workouts. Remember <laughs> all these people? <laughs> or, or, or a lot of people question whether he would because of the contract oh, uncertainty. You know, know as, who you are, bro. As we, have, as we have exhausted on this program, we knew he was going to be showing up to off-season workouts. And now the Dolphins are uh, showing their bucket hat to a uh, – uh, throws in uh, in these offseason oh, workouts. I mean, hey, the news this week or Chris Chris Kurt told there there's no deal eminent. They all picked up on the eminent part finally with uh, with Odell Beckham. I'm like, yeah, I think we told you something a couple weeks back that it wasn't eminent, bro. Come on, dude. I mean, give me a break. It's just it just gets it gets so ridiculous. You know what I mean? Clearly, Odell wants money, and Miami isn't going to offer money. They don't have to offer money. They're not. They're not sitting there competing with a bunch of teams for Odell Beckham because a bunch of teams don't want Odell Beckham. And that's what Odell's dealing with now. It's like, wow, I don't really have a huge market for me. It's only a couple teams interested, and they're not really offering me anything close to what I made last year. Right. And reality has kind of hit him in the face. I think they're just waiting for some injury or some kind of desperation or maybe after the draft. Somebody wanted a receiver, they couldn't get it. Now they may go back and try to go for Odell or something like that. I think that's what they're holding out for right now. But it's just one of those things that people want to hurry stuff up. And this process is just, if you know Chris Greer, he doesn't play that game. It looks That's what he's been. He's been one of the most patient GMs we've ever had here. Yeah, uh, Odell's not sniffing that fifteen million that he got from Baltimore last year, and even on a uh, after a decent season for you know, what you could expect for him at this point, then uh, yeah, he, he's still not going to be making that. I was actually really surprised when I saw what he made from from the Ravens last season. I said, wait, wait did everybody pay all that for Odell uh, at this stage? But um, yeah, I think now finally the the reality will set in of what his true market is, and uh, and you know maybe he comes around after a little bit. Yeah, I'm with you there. All right. Um, what else uh, going on in Dolphin Nation that uh, you can fill us in? Uh, yeah, I mean, right now it's it's all about the draft. So, uh, yeah, we did speak to, to Chris Greer uh, just uh, within this past week. But, um, yeah, once we get down to, to a week within it, then it, it's all about it. It's Thursday night. It's what they're going to do at 21. And, um, yeah, I mean, for me and the Sun Sentinel, I'm, I'm going to be also working up a, a, a draft locals uh, a piece. So kind of uh, all the South Florida high school guys, whether Miami Dade, Broward and Palm Beach counties, I always like to do that this time of year. Cause I did it going back to when I was just starting as a full-time sports writer, uh, covering high school sports. So, um, a lot of those guys I covered when I was, uh, on that beat or then like when I got to covering UM and I was covering them from a recruiting standpoint. So like Dallas Turner is in this draft, Alabama, St. Thomas Aquinas, and then uh, obviously some Canes, like uh, James Williams was such a big prospect coming out of high school. Cam Kitchens uh, was a good prospect, but then took off really uh, with that uh, All-American year at UM and so on and so forth. So, um, I mean, I'll be uh, looking at that as well, in addition to just tracking all the, the Dolphin stuff going into this uh, this final week. All right. Follow him on Twitter at David Faronis underscore and catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, have a great weekend, my brother. We will catch up on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thank you. Welton Rayom. These are the guys you need, bro. I mean, th these are the left tackles you need. Okay? These guys are going to protect you. And they did it for us when Progressive just was uh, not treating us fairly. And they brought Progressive to their knees. And they've done it for, man, I don't know. It's well over 15 of our listeners, 15, 16, 17, something like that. It is. It's a ridiculous number already. That's, that's called Welton Rayom. And already like half of them have had judgments and very satisfactory. Even one of our listeners in Orlando, uh, everybody that calls Jeff Welton, Daniel Rayom, they are for the better. I'm telling you. And unfortunately, DeSantis did not set us up uh, properly for home insurance. So uh, he gave the advantage to the companies, not to us, the consumer. So if you're dealing with bankruptcy, homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury, call the people you can trust. 
I can trust them. You can trust them. Jeff Welt, Daniel Rayom, 954-966-4646. Save it on that cell phone. 954-966-4646. This has been another session of the Welton Rayom Miami Dolphins Report with David Veronis. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. Welton Rayom can help. Right, all right, all right. Bitcoin is right there between 64 and a half and 65,000. We had a moment last night where, wait a minute, yep, it went down to like 59.5, and if you were able to pull the trigger somewhere down there in the, in the 60 range, good for you, good for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Roderick Freeman, good morning, Big O and Sean. I don't see the Heat winning tonight. Uh, let's see. One I Jack, I lowered my price on ETH in this dip. Probably should have gotten more Bitcoin as well, but only only so much to go around. Amen. Do what you can, my friend. Do what you can. Um, what else? Uh, hey, Big O, saw a documentary on Bitcoin, and it can even survive a nuclear war. So now that's no excuse not to, you know, you can send Bitcoin without internet too. So just people have to kind of have to understand, you know, they don't get it. It's, you know, this is the best currency in the world. I keep telling you, I've been telling you for over three years now. and. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And I'm not a financial advisor. You know that. I know that. But I haven't been wrong. So Joseph says, thank you for your honesty. I appreciate you, sir. Because there's a lot of people that can't handle the honesty. Um, Brian Landis in. I'm watching WWE over the heat tonight. Are you doing that too, Sean? Wow. Rob says, who, who's that girl? Uh, let's see. Um, when people or idiots debate about Tua, my only answer is if you can find a better QB, I'm all ears. Great QBs do not grow on tree. Tua works really hard in the offseason and he gets better. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh you're gonna have your haters, whatever, man. The Heat are still playing basketball this season. Well, kind of, Nico. You know, kind of. Dustin Ross says, Bill, good morning from the beautiful Arad Arad Ar- Arandax. Arandax Mar- Aradon, no, what is it? Arondex Mountain. Oh, damn. Adirondex Mountains. Uh, you and Sean are coming up here on my dime. Let's make it happen. Wow. That would be nice. Broadcasting out there. Well, Dustin, our business number, if you want to fly us out there, because I've never been there, neither has Sean. That would be cool. You got a business? 786-754-4664. That's 786-754-4664. That's our business number, Dustin. Adirondax Mountains. Let's go. That would be beautiful scenery. Look at that. Sean putting up the billboard and everything. Cosa Nostra. Yeah, by the way, do you have strong internet there? Because you got to have strong internet there. Think Blue Dodgers, Pablo Diaz, Bulls in a blowout. Wow. I think it'll be close, actually. If it's a blowout, man. Pablo, I'll be really depressed tonight for that. I mean, I can't. You know what? Not even a heat loss can actually. It'll it'll have me a, a, a little sad. Just a little bit. 
the having's going on, bro. There's too much on the line. It's just no. There's so much good coming out of this today that I just, you know, nothing can ruin my uh my uh having. Nothing. Would you be mad uh, if they reach for Xavier? Yes, yes, in the first round for sure, dude. Yes, yes, I would be mad. Yeah, I'm not drafting a 150-pound receiver in, in the first round. Not when you can get a, a uh, foundational piece for your D or O line, bro. Are you kidding me? Miami needs to win up front, my brother. We have enough speed. How much more do you need? You don't need more. You need to start hitting people in the mouth, my brother. We need more of that. Less of the finesse, more of the physicalness. Okay? Big O for sports humor so we can all laugh, at, and you as well. Who would you pick hanging out in Vegas for four-day weekend? Antonio Brown, Lawrence Taylor, Dennis Rodman. But, bro, what do you want to do? Kill me? Everybody there is doing some kind of drug, and 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 Lawrence Taylor's going trying to find fifteen year old girls to bang. Antonio Brown is like a, a sick human being, you know. Um, wow, I don't want to hang out with any of those people. I'll go Dennis Rodman. You know what I'm saying? Because I I don't think I'll have to talk too much to Dennis. Antonio Brown and Lawrence Taylor, I want nothing to do with that. You know, Dennis Rodman's kind of a disaster, but he's kind of on his own. But Antonio Brown and Lawrence Taylor hurt other people. So I'm going to go Dennis Rodman. And, you know, he's probably just going to sit in a corner and drink. He'll say something stupid every once in a while, and I'll just nod my head. Tyrone Hall says, let's go Bulls. Super V is in the house. Jimmy equivalent to X at the end of his career. Yeah, kind of, a little bit. Lenny says, good morning, Big O, Sean, and the rest of you. Like the old saying goes, you reap what you sow. This is what they get for taking the regular season so lightly. This is all on Jimmy. Yep. Ray says, QAM will never say that. They'll just say Hero and Bam need to step up. Yeah, no, of course. Crazy. They'd be nervous with the team on the, on the station. They had a nice run, but it's over. No Butler or Rozier. doesn't even matter. You're not beating Boston. Yep, no, yeah, they're done. JC's in it with me. Lenny says, thank you for being real to the fan base, Big O. The main reason why I've been listening to you since your QAM days. Thank you. As, ma as much as fans don't want to admit, Jimmy got what he deserved. Well, karma bit him in the ass. That's for sure. Adam Sadowski. Willie Jean. Bam is just overworked, power forward, being asked to do too much. All right, Willie. Yeah, my brother, I'm, you know. Dwayne Wade did a ton, too, and he kept going until he couldn't go anymore. And Bam just doesn't have it in him. He's a great role player. That's what he is. Oscar says, let's tank then. Yeah, there's nothing to tank at this point. Um offensive rebounding killed the heat at the game yeah and turnovers and they're you know eventually the lesser team lost you know the better team won chimp shock says oh should i convert eth to bitcoin no sir you should continue to buy eth and buy if you have any money buy bitcoin don't be converting to the other or anything like that eth is going to go up to 10 15 thousand dollars dude okay i think it easily gets to seven or ten in this run so think about it. It's at 3,000 something. Okay. So if I think it'll go to seven to 10, then that means it, it's going to flip a couple of times. It's at 3,000. So if it goes to 10, it flips three times over. In order for Bitcoin to flip three times over at this point, you would have to get to $190,000, my man. 
So you have a better chance of flipping ETH three times first before you flip Bitcoin. Comprende, compadre? So stay with ETH because your money will grow faster at the moment. If you have money for extra money, then throw it in Bitcoin. That's all. I wish you would have done it last night when it went down to 5960. It was like, oh my God, the halving is tomorrow and this thing went down to 60. I'm buying more. The only thing I screwed up, I, I got to admit, I screwed up last night because I bought some at 60 and, and then I think I got it like at 60.2. Okay. So 60,200 and, and it was dropping into the 59s. And so I said, let me save a little bit more. And if it drops a couple more, then I'll buy again. I'll buy it a little lower. And it didn't. And it just returned. And then it just took off. And I'm like, all right, I'm out. What can I do? I tried to lower the average of the, the portion that I have right there that I want to show you guys. Because that's all the Cash App uh, example that I'm showing you guys. So, um, but it was, uh, no, I wouldn't convert it, my man. I would not do that. That's uh, that's a waste of money. You're not going to make nearly your money like you will with ETH. Be patient. By the way, um, here's the other thing you should do. Um, open an Exodus account. Um, wh wh what's the name? Chimp, Chimp Shock. Open an Exodus account and and uh, stake all your ETH, bro. You get like 4%, 5%. So you're getting free ETH. And you're adding it to your ETH. And it's growing. Free ETH. So go to Exodus, make sure when you download it, keep your seed uh, uh, words, your 12 seed words in the order they are and all that. Don't put it on the internet in any way, not on an email, nothing. Write it down, keep it somewhere safe, and then then use stake your Exodus there, bro, and make your Exodus, you know, pay off for itself. Have it work for you, man. So you should do. Uh he cultures Alonzo Morning. Lift some weights and play some defense. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, let's get to it. Hour number two is next. Don't forget, man, if you go to Caneswear, use our code BIG010, you will get 10% off. So you want to buy a, a messy jersey, a UM jersey. You want to go get a heat shirt, a panthers man we got the panthers in the playoffs you want to get a, a sharp panthers hat or something go to caneswear man caneswear.com or go to 2655 south university drive in davy use our code big o10 you will get 10 percent off and if you go online and you order over 99 dollars, you will also get free shipping jeff and the boys man they ship it out quickly man nobody works harder than those guys our number two Manny Navarro joins us next. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call 954-966-4646. Oh, great. You have a doorbell camera. Now you have a front row seat to your house getting robbed. No breaking into my house! Ooh, there goes the TV. I'm sure it'll turn up at the pawn shop. No, not the TV! Just because you can see them, that doesn't mean you can stop them. With Slogans, you get 24-hour monitoring, a free home security system, and professional installation. Plus, free doorbell camera, one that'll actually work for you. Get out of my house! Get out of the house! Call 1-800-ALARM-ME. The viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., Ownership, Management, Sponsors, or Website.
If you're a Miami sports fan, there's only one store to go to, and that's Canes Wear at Miami Fanwear in Davie. They're your one-stop shop for all your inner Miami CF, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, and Marlins merchandise. They have hats, t-shirts, game day jerseys, and so much more. Located at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, and open 24-7 online at caneswear.com or innermiamiwear.com. Call them at 954-835-5597. Canes Wear, the spot where inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. Time for Canes fans to get what they want. Information, insight, and perspective. It's the Canes Wear Miami Hurricanes Report with Manny Navarro. Exclusively on a Big O Radio Show. Here's Big O and insider Manny Navarro. Ride, ride, ride. How you doing, baby? Doing, doing great, great, brother. How are you? Very good. Very good. You know, I was... Um, uh, one of the themes of, of the show today... And uh, you've been a beat guy on the Heat, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, three years. Three, I know. And you, uh, and you, so you got to know a lot of people in that organization. You've known a lot of those people in that organization for a long time. And and so, you know, one of the things that I hate to say it, but karma bit Jimmy Butler in the ass. You know, quiere ser un descarado, and you want to kind of coast. The entire regular season, not put in anything to it. And you've done it two years in a row where because you did that, you're in a play in. If you actually gave a shit about the regular season, you would be a much higher seed. You would be relaxing like the Celtics and the Pacers and the Knicks are. Instead, you played a play in game and you got yourself injured. And what I know they got away with it last year. And they tried to decado again this year to try to do it again and get away with it, and they got burned. Yeah. So my point is, the weirdest thing is, you have been on a lot of these beats, and we've seen Panther dysfunction. We've seen Kane's dysfunction. We've seen Dolphins dysfunction. The Marlins are constantly dysfunctional. Inter-Miami started off incredibly dysfunctional okay they're kind of still dysfunctional by the way they just spend a lot of money um so overall but yeah. in 25 plus years when riley took over have you ever seen dysfunction no, no. and so you've been around these people for three years longer in other words because you you've popped in and yeah. out over years and all that other stuff do you know anybody in that organization that takes six minutes off, much less six months off? Yeah, it doesn't happen often in that organization at all. Uh, really, you, know, you, won't if you, you won't work in that organization if you take six minutes off, bro. Everybody in that organization is top notch. Yeah. The well, only guy that takes it off is that guy. Yeah, and but that's but that's ultimately Pat Riley and, and the bed that he made for himself when he said he wanted Jimmy Butler. You get the good and you get the bad. You get the playoff Jimmy who 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 takes you to two NBA finals, can't win you a championship because he doesn't have enough around him. But uh, you know, and then you get the other side of Jimmy where you play with fire and you get burned, which is what happened to them this season, you know? And and uh I just think look, man, he's how old is he now? 34, 30 he's somewhere done in there. More than that, bro. He's done more than his that. body his body is just not what it used to be and when you play that many minutes you play for tom thibodeau before you even come to miami and you get run to the ground the way that he did it's practice it's, minutes practice yeah. minutes, okay yeah all right because there a lot of people they, they go and time the how much he's played in game minutes well it's not that much different than this no 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 did you play for pat riley did you play for tom thibodeau do you know what practice is like for these kind of people? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's not it's not a it's not a, a what's that called the country club? Okay, you're gonna no. put in work, bro, in practice. So that's where the wear and tear also comes into. You know, yeah, and and look, man, uh, this run that the Heat have had, like it's it's gonna end unglamorously this year, but, but I but mean, it's been Jesus. glamorous. But I it's mean, been glamorous. It's been right? glamorous, right? It's been super glamorous. Like, enjoy it. Enjoy what it was. And yeah. now, you know, you got to kind of start over. You got to find another another guy. Jimmy is not Jimmy anymore. You have Bam, who you, who you call the ultimate role player. Super role uh, player. He is. Yeah. He's a super role player, bro. But, He's not a know, star. Do you call him a star, bro? Really? 
No, he, he could be an all-star, but he's not a superstar. Yes. No, no, no. He's definitely he's definitely an all-star. Yeah. He's not a franchise player. He's not a star, bro. He's not. He, you know, this is what I've said about Bam. You know the evolution of the caveman? And, you know, he's all scrunched up, and then eventually he's standing straight, right? And it's us. Right. Less air and all that good stuff. Well, it kind of started with Grant Long, right? Then it kind of moved over to P.J. Brown. Then it, it kind of moved over to uh, – who am I missing? Who's the next guy kind of in line? Udonis Haslam. Mm -hmm. then, it moved, then it moved to Chris Bosh. Right. And now it's Cam. That's kind right. of, it's the guy you need on your team. They're not all the same. Bam is better than all of those guys in different ways. Although I'd rather have UD taking a shot than Bam. That's just right. me. I, you know, I'm just just me. I want UD taking the 16, 17 footer over Bam every day of the week and twice on Sundays in a key moment. That's just me because he's more clutch. But right. all those guys were like you needed them on your team in those stages of your existence. They were super important to your existence and to your success, but they weren't the number one or two stars. It wasn't Shaq uh -huh. or Wade, and, and Bosch was the best three you've ever had. He's a one or two, but he took the backseat to play the three role, and there's yep. nothing wrong with that. To me, Bam is a freaking great three, mm -hmm. setting the picks and doing the rebounding and all. I love him in that role. Just please don't tell me that he's a star and is going to carry you offensively because those guys mother F everybody and say, bro, get out of the way. I'm taking over. That's never been him. It's never been I, him. I, I went to the NBA uh, draft combine that year when they drafted uh, Bam. I was up up in Chicago for, for you know all that preseason pre work, and I remember everything I was hearing was if they can get Donovan Mitchell to fall to 14, they'll get Donovan Mitchell. And Bam was a player I knew they liked, but it was one of those deals where everybody thought, well, Donovan Mitchell's probably got the higher ceiling, right, at, at that time. You go back to that year and you think that the, the Nuggets uh, traded that pick to the Jazz and the Jazz came up and got Donovan Mitchell. How, how different would things be right now if had, had the Heat gotten Donovan Mitchell? Right, right. That's a star that can impose. His, that's what I right. try to tell people. Like, you know, Bam might have been a star in the 90s mm -hmm. because – points were a premium you were only scoring 80 90 points right so that's where his game would have been in incredibly although there were bigger trees in the middle that would have given him a ton of problems but still i'm just saying his game like ben wallace yeah you know it because his offensive game is actually better than ben wallace so he would have had a better shot in the 80s and the night in the 90s when you were scoring 80 or 90 points mm -hmm. to be a star but in a game where you're scoring 120 stars are the ones that can impose their offensive will if you can't impose your offensive will whenever the hell you want you're not a star in this league that's kind of the way i look at it you know yeah. what i mean but it's just the talking point today i just want like jimmy does what no one has ever done under pat riley in 25 plus years no one bro no yeah. one. you're right no you're right and i think i think people just again just respect what Jimmy did. He took him to two finals, really, with two, with two teams that shouldn't have been there. To be in all honesty, well, they, they shouldn't have been, there. Shouldn't have been in the three Eastern Conference finals. Think about it. Jason Tatum, you know, everybody's talking about him and what a superstar he is. This, I think he's taken to the Celtics, what, to the finals once, right? Yeah. And he's lost to Jimmy twice in the playoffs. I right. mean, right. Right. No, they've overachieved. The, the run with Jimmy was phenomenal. The, the failure was that they didn't get the other star. Mm -hmm. That was the failure. Dude, they didn't. They didn't find the other star. It's hard, it's hard to do. It's hard to do when you when you go out and you give all that money to Duncan Robinson, and then you you trade for Kyle Lowry. They made mistakes. That, that's the one that really killed them. They made mistakes, but listen, that was partly Jimmy. Jimmy wanted Kyle Lowry here, right? Well, so, now we realize why he wanted Kyle Lowry because he's the only one that can guard him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. So he and I got you know sign Kyle. Yeah, sign yeah. Get Kyle. him. Get him off my ass. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's bring Kyle. No, 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 no. He's yeah, no, no. He's good. He can do it. I don't have to deal with that pain in the ass because it's like it, Kyle wanted him the entire time. Every time he was just went, no, no, I want him. You know, and so we didn't play as well with with Kyle. So you know, now now we kind of see it. All right. So what's going on in Kane's land? 
Well, they're busy uh, in the transfer portal, you know, um, setting, you know, they went this week on Wednesday, met with Damian Martinez, the running back out of Oregon State. He is priority number one for them, I think, as far as offensive players and offensive targets. They want to get Cam Ward uh, a legit number one running back who's healthy, not coming off of surgery like Mark Fletcher and, and, and some of these other guys, A.J. Allen are. So, um you know, I think Miami's sitting pretty good in this situation. Martinez has already been to Arizona. I think he's going to Kentucky and Mississippi uh, State as well. I think Miami is the team to beat. So uh, he, his last visit will be to Miami, is, is my understanding, and and hopefully they get they end up getting him. A um, couple of other guys that they're after: uh, Sam Brown, former receiver uh, at Houston, who entered the portal. He's a guy who played for um, uh, Shannon Dawson over at Houston, 6'2", 195. Again. If you can add another weapon at the receiver room, some you don't have to count on one of the the freshmen like JoJo Trader or Nikar to have to step in in case there's injuries. They're just looking to add depth. I think Sam Houston's a solid guy. Um, and then there's a couple guys on defense, two and two two at cornerback in particular, Deonte Hill from Marshall, who played for Chevis Jackson. A lot of this is familiarity. Oh, you know, one thing I think you know, we think about the NFL, right, and and player movement and free agency. Coaches like having guys if they, they know they can trust in their in their locker room. They prioritize that. So, you know, I mentioned Sam Brown from Houston. I mentioned Diane Hill from Marshall. Well, gee, why? Because the coordinators had those guys before. They recruited them. They had them in their building and they can trust them. Yeah. And if you're and if you're looking for depth and not a true number one guy, that's what you want. You want a guy you can trust in your system that you know is going to get the job done. So I think uh Brown and Hill are probably two guys that uh, because of their relationships with Miami's coaching staff, are, Miami's well positioned to get them as as depth pieces and guys that can help improve the room overall. So, uh, you know, there's some other guys, defensive tackles, some some other cornerbacks. Uh, I, it's not superstar laden. Like everybody who's thinking, like, man, there's you know, Miami's going to come out with four, you know, all ACC first team players in the portal. That's not going to happen. I think the only one that's really a star is Damian Martinez, and if they can get him, which I, again, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, that immediately upgrades the running back room all right good stuff now uh a subject i've been dying to talk to you about uh since it came up here the last couple of days and you and i do this all the time on the show we yeah. warn people all the time about this yes walk the idiots off the ledge these grown-ass men that get excited about some silly-ass high school players signing so in the last couple of days, Cormani McLean, after oh, all, gosh. Yeah. all the fanfare, folded his tent and left Colorado. And now we got Jaden Rashada. Yep. Another guy with all the fanfare now leaving Arizona State. And this is why getting excited about kiddies getting recruited who don't know what color they like or what food they want to try this week or whatever, they can't make up their minds. And if they don't get what they want, they're out of here. This is the reason why you don't get excited about anybody until they actually start playing for you. A thousand percent. Oh, and, and you know, what's funny. I've been doing this project for the athletic called the all state teams. And we're, and we're basically looking at the biggest hits to come out of every single state. Okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm going through all of these, you know, all Amer guys that turn into All-Americans, consensus All-Americans, and I'm reading about their recruitment, like what happened in their recruiting. I would say 90 to 95 percent of those guys didn't dick around with their recruitment. They committed early and they and they stayed, and they stayed with their team. Well, Larry Nagas. what Larry Nagas says, exactly what Larry Nagas says. Right. Like there was no. Hey, I need I need all this drama. I need to make a big showcase of my announcement. Hey, my mom's taking my paper and running away with it and not letting me sign. Like none of that stuff. Very few instances where where decisions were very dramatic. It's guys who know what they wanted to do. They were focused on, hey, I want to make it to the pros. I got to use this university to help me get there. And so it's it's amazing. I I mean, that's one of the biggest takeaways I've had as I've been doing this project that so many of the guys were committed for a year or six months or eight months before they signed and they just stuck with the school and they knew what they wanted to do and they knew the coach that so all of these guys the Jaden Rashadas the Cormani McLeans 
when you follow these recruitments, and it's great for, for, for all the recruiting websites, this is awesome. Everybody wants to read about these guys because they have a five or a four star next to their name, right? So people are like, wow, this guy's going to be great. He's going to be awesome. Man, the kids ultimately that thrive in college, the, the can't miss kids are the ones that just know where they're going. Oh, and they know what they want. And I think I think that's the lesson to be learned here. And quite frankly, you know, this has nothing to do with football. This is a completely other sport and another sex. Yep. Uh, when I look at the Cavender twins, mm -hmm. you know, I get it. Lovely girls, fantastic marketing. Awesome. Yep. I saw two girls that went to wrestling and said, oh, shit, this is like, you mean I don't stand around and look pretty? You mean I got to work and throw my body around? And yep. oh, my God. I'm going to be all bruised up and I'm going to take hits and I'm going to trash my, no, I'm out of here. Yep. Katie Meyer. Oh God, you're too tough. Oh, Katie Meyer's gone. Hey, let's go back. The party's on. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back and party on South beach. Yeah. I, listen, man, I, I, swear, I swear to God, that's what the Cavender twins have just <laughs> shown me in the last year and a half that they are just, you know, two pretty girls that market themselves. Because when they gave up, on, when they said they were going to wrestling, see, the problem is, look, I'm not, I'm not a wrestling fan, but I'm not a wrestling dummy. I'm not the guy that doesn't like wrestling and says, that's all bullshit. No, 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 no. Dude. Tremendous amount that's, of work, dude. Those people are super athletes, bro. Oh, yeah. They their asses off. They're, they're Cirque du Soleil, and they're not, and they land. That's the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cirque du Soleil stays up and they keep it and they, they break their falls and all these people aren't breaking falls. These people are landing on the ground. Hey, all, all these people, they're 200 pounds plus, brother. They're, they're, there's bones, bones to be broken, muscles to be torn. So they have to take it serious. They, they, that shit is, is real, bro. Yeah, okay. man. It's choreographed, but bro, they put their bodies through hell. They're stunt men. Essentially is what they are. And stunt women. Stunt men and women. And to me, the Cavender twins folded like a cheap tent there. They folded like a cheap tent with Katie Meyer. And now that Katie Meyer's gone, I don't know this new coach, but somehow or another, they probably think it's going to be all a sunny day. And so now they're, you know, they're all coming back. To me, the Cavender twins just look like a bunch of softies, just like Jaden Rashada, just like Cormani McLean. If I'm, I, I think Mario was recruiting Cormani McLean, correct? Yeah, he, was. he wanted him because Demarcus Van Dyke, who was the cornerbacks coach at the time, had a great relationship with, with him. And they thought, we're going to get him. We're going to, you know, kind of mold him into what we want him to be. But obviously, DVD left and that was it. And, and let me tell you, I, now I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. I don't care if you need corners or whatever. Go get somebody else. He's already now. Now his character for me is already in question because I don't know much about Arizona State. But I kind of I, I like what Dion is doing, and I love his old school style. So mm -hmm. to me, that I already can tell he he couldn't handle it. He right. couldn't handle somebody that was going to be honest with him because that's what Dion's going to do. He's going to be brutally honest with you about where you stand. And by yeah. the way, you're playing his position. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> Listen. Oh, pe people don't people don't realize this. And and the one thing I'll say about Dion, and they're like he's cutting so many people. Dion doesn't recruit like everybody else does. He doesn't go and actually do this in-depth homework on all. He doesn't get to know the people. It, like he he doesn't go and visit the high schools. Like he makes all these, you know, his 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 assessments essentially off of film and and whatever it is when those kids come to visit. So you're gonna have more misses in terms of personality when that's the only thing you know. When you don't go to somebody's hometown and and really recruit them, uh, and get to know the people around them. And so that's why I think for all the criticism Mario gets. He actually does his homework on a lot of guys. When it doesn't work out, it's usually because the kid gets injured or because they just they, they don't they don't have it. They don't have what it takes. Yeah. You know, but listen, there's a lot of attrition in college football. There's a lot of guys now. You go through the list, the amount of recruiting classes, go back and count. You know, you sign 25 guys in a class, you probably really hit on seven or eight, and that's it. And the rest of them are guys that don't really ever pan out. Right. It's just the way it is. Yeah. No. All right. I'm with you there. All right, what do you got going on in the athletics so folks can check you out, my friend? Yes, well, we we had a lot of stories. I did. I went to the Elite Eleven camp last weekend. I, I 
covered all these quarterbacks, wrote about all these quarterbacks in the state that are top quarterbacks. If you want to read about those guys, 2026 guys, some of them that Miami is after, uh, including Noah Grubbs and Brady Hart and, and these guys that are top 10 quarterbacks in the 26 class that are going to make decisions early. You can read about that. You can go uh, read about Carter Smith, who's going to Michigan, a kid out of South Fort Myers. He's going to go play quarterback for them. Um, and you can read about um, – Man, there's so much stuff on the transfer portal. My my colleagues, I mean, we're we're like all we have this transfer portal blog. We're all over all that stuff. So everything that's going on with the portal, we're on top of. Um, and I have my new podcast, the Wide Ride Podcast, that I recorded a couple of days ago with Carlos Ledo, where we talked about uh, spring football. We talked about the transfer portal, guys. Miami was going after. So if you want more Kane stuff, you can go check that out. There you go, and follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Manny, have a great weekend, my brother. We'll talk on Tuesday. All right, man. Take care. I'll see you. Thank you, sir. Remember, caneswear.com. You go, you buy over $99, you will get free shipping. They got anything and everything with the Canes logo on it, pretty much. And again, Dolphins, Marlins, Panthers, Heat, Inter Miami. You want to get a messy jersey? You can get it there. And use our code so you can get 10% off. Big O10. Caneswear.com. Welcome to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. All right, all right, all right. Dolphin 13, they couldn't keep Robert Hunt, bro. The, the contract was too much. It's too much. They have to see. The problem is they hit on a lot of picks these these two years, this year and next year, a few years back. They got too many people that they have to resign. And as I've told you, instead of, you know, giving you misinformation like a lot of people do, um, they have chosen to sign Tua and next year's wave of free agents. You, you're not going to sign everybody. And so you had to make some tough decisions. So you feel like you can overcome and 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 make up for these guys that you lost. Next year's class is the class that you're worried about. You want to keep that class. So they want to keep Phillips and Waddle around. So to them, it's important to keep Holland around and those kind of guys. They feel those are anchor players. They can replace Hunt. They can find another guard. So they don't want to spend $20 million on a guard. So that's kind of the way they're thinking. You have to understand that. It's not that it's a cap crisis or anything like that, like others try to make it out to be. No, it's that you. this was where you hit a lot. And as I've explained over and over again, after next year's wave, you go through two light years. Why? Because the last two years before this, what you were doing was you had traded away your picks. So you have very few picks and they're later picks, most of them. So and and so far, there's only like, you know, one to resign a, a Chan right now. You know, there's not a lot over the next couple of years that you're going to spend a lot of money on. So that is going to allow you to give you some flexibility there. That's kind of the way it is. Next year, you have a bunch of picks. Now, those guys, that wave won't come in until four or five years down the line. So it's it's something that you have to time. And and that's the macro view of it. The problem is a lot of people in the media, they don't want to give you macro, they want to give you micro. So that way, you know, give you a short-sighted point of view because this is the only moment I can show you panic and I can make it sensationalistic and I can write it that way instead of giving it to you in a logical macro sense that, okay, look, this is what's happening fiscally. This year, they passed on the guys to sign them next year because they don't have, no one in the world has cap space to sign all, both classes. They just don't. And then the following two years after that, you didn't have a lot of high picks because you traded them for X and Jalen Ramsey and others, right? And, and, and all that stuff. So now that you have a light free agent class, for the two years after next year that will allow you to kind of reset a little bit. And that's why you're going to have a lot of picks next year because four years from now, again, the cycle continues. 
but it let me let me make it a cap crisis this year and just show you and talk about the moment right now because that's how I can sensationalize it. That's how I can get you to worry and concern, but not show you the big picture and the overall track of what's going on and educate you on what they're doing this year, next year, and what's coming up in years three and four from now. We do this on the show, right? Because we're the ones that tell you two years ago, hey, listen, hang in there, relax. Byron Jones will be cut at the end of this year, and then X will be cut the following year right we're the ones that tell you no don't panic you know uh i was driving around the other day and listening to hawk and crowder right and hawk goes well they they misjudged the whole wilkins thing no they didn't dude you just don't know shit about it and i understand you know you guys just clown around and have some fun and they do a good job doing what they do but they don't know anything especially hawk he doesn't know shit about it and so Again, we told you a year ago, yo, they weren't paying Wilkins, and they're not paying Wilkins. He'll be gone in a year. We're the only ones that told you that. No writer wrote that. Nobody on any blog did that. Nobody. We're the only ones that told you a year ago, yo, they weren't paying Wilkins. And then we told you he wasn't very happy in the building. We told you that information later on, but okay. We're going to give it to you straight, and we're going to give you macro. Kind of like when I when I talk about investing, I don't talk about the micro. I talk about macro. Because micro is not the real picture. Macro is the real picture. You have to look at the big picture. You have to look at it that way because that's how the whole equation is put together. It's not put together in one half season or in investing We've been waiting for a four-year cycle. So, you know, it's not, I'm not worried about the Bitcoin I bought in 2022 or 2023. I'm waiting for what happens in 2024 and after. Because it's what we were telling you, right? For three years now, we were forecasting. We were giving you the macro on it all. And that's kind of the way it's gone. You know, that's how we do it on the show. I don't need to play this sensationalistic game. I know it's it's a it's I know it's to my detriment. Okay? I know it is. I know it hurts Sean's pocket and it hurts my pocket. It's better to be sensationalistic and you know, talk about crazy stuff that doesn't, you know, but I'd rather be right than be sensationalistic. Cuz I end up being right a lot more than everybody in the local media combined. Okay, why? Because they are looking at it differently. They're looking at it day by day, week by week. I don't. I don't do that. And those of you that are on this platform, you don't end up doing it either if you follow the information. Um, what else? Uh, Big O invented a new position in basketball, has evolving the game, pushing it forward. Super role player. That's right. That's how we do it here, bro. We're cutting edge, my man. We're cutting edge on this show. McLean needs to work in the weight room and needs to work on his head and focus on what he wants. Yeah, who gives a shit? Uh, all I know is uh, I wouldn't touch Cormani McLean with a 10-foot pole. If he can't play for Dion, he certainly can't play for Mario. Nah. Those kind, those are the kind of coaches that aren't going to take shit. So, you know, they give their body to wrestling 100. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And to me, the 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 Cavender twins showed me everything when they they said they were wrestling and then they weren't. I got ah, you, pretty little girls, don't want to do that stuff. That takes a lot of work. You know, put your little pretty little bodies and get all bruised up. Maybe even break a bone or two, fractures, strains tears are you ready for that sweetheart no you're not stay pretty and stay cute on tiktok um dude 67 says sports stradamus has spoken the sports stradamus has spoken uh hawk only knows food and jokes yes that's uh he's great at that that's his that's his deal Oh, it's kind of odd where people just laugh at their own jokes constantly. If you tell a joke, are you supposed to laugh at your own joke? 
I've always found that weird when you're having a conversation with somebody and then they're, they're telling jokes and trying to tell jokes and they're laughing at their own jokes. Weird. You know, real comedy, when you do comedy, you're not really laughing at your own jokes. Kind of like, you know, you carry it and you have the, the straight face and you let the audience laugh at it. You know, because that's kind of the way it becomes even funnier that you can tell the joke and you hold your face. And then let them react. I think that's how it's done. But kind of funny how you sitting there laughing constantly at your own jokes weird uh aaron i was down on the heat on wednesday night but after hooking up with a hot tourist girl carly last night from long island new york i'm inspired again the heat just got to find a way to win against all odds there we go you know what you got to do now Jam Phil Collins the entire night. Okay. Dude, some goes, you're old school. Keep it real, bro. Uh, big O, uh, big O were my favorites. My, oh, big O were favorite all time comedian. Are you asking me what's my favorite all time comedian? It's probably Richard Pryor. Probably. Yeah, Richard Pryor. Um, oh, dude, what's this guy's name with the uh, ponytail that he passed away? Uh, George Carlin. Oh, God, I love George Carlin. So smart. Um, let's see. Early Eddie Murphy was, I mean, he's no longer, he hasn't been funny in decades, but um, God. The delirious stuff and raw. Oh my God. That's some pretty good shit. Um, but Pryor and Carlin are probably two of my favorites of all time. That's probably two of my favorites. I love those guys. So, anyway, too much salad this morning. My typing is bad. You're uh, smoking that salad. Uh, let's get to our three graphic sports calendar. The great Alan Blanco, custom printing and embroidery if you need it for your company, your fantasy league. Uh, the Marlins postponed yesterday. They'll play a doubleheader on Saturday. Uh, today, 220, Wrigley Field, Jesus Luzardo taking on Shota Ionaga. Ionana. Io, Ionanga. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not exactly sure. Dude's 2-0 and with a 0 ERA. Our guy's 0-2 with a 7-6 ERA. That, got, that, that, that already has me nervous right there. Um, tonight, 7-10, Bulls in the heat. Heat are favored by only a point and a half. The over and under is 205. Bulls are plus 105 on the money line. The heat are minus 125. No Butler, no Rogier. Duncan is questionable. We'll see 9.30 tonight at the Smoothie King Center. It's got to be one of my favorite names for an arena. It is the Kings and Fly Pele can fly without Fat Boy. Well, they now can fly because Fat Boy's not bringing him down, but they won't soar because Fat Boy's not around. Kings are favored by a point and a half on the road. The over and under is 211 and a half. Kings minus 125 on the money line. Pelicans plus 105 on the money line. On Saturday, 7.30, Chase Stadium, Inter-Miami, hosting Nashville. Let's go. See if they get it done. Miami is favored by minus 230 on the money line. Nashville is plus 500 on the money line. A draw is plus 360. And then on Sunday, the Lightning are visiting the Panthers at Amarant Bank Arena for game one of the playoffs 12 30 they drop the puck that is your 3a graphics sports calendar call them 786-618-1443 
All right, all right, all right. By the way, uh, Seminole Casino Hotel in Immokalee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stephen Marley, Saturday, May 4th. I'll be there. We'll be giving away a pair of tickets one week from today. One week from today. So, starting today till next week, I'm going to be mentioning it. Send me a DM with your full name, address, email account, and uh, and, and phone number. So, you can win the tickets. Now, remember, it is in the Seminole Casino Hotel in Immokalee. So, if you don't live in Palm Beach County, St. Lucie, okay? You got to drive up there for the concert if you live south. So, really, don't go for the tickets if you can't go to the concert. Go for the tickets if you can go to the concert. Seminole Casino Hotel in Immokalee. Stephen Marley. By the way, Inner Circle is opening up. Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? Oh, what you going to do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. By the way, Summer Jammin', Mary Mary. And you've got to check out Stephen Marley's new album, Old School. Bob Weir, Eric Clapton, Jack Johnson, Ziggy Marley are all on the record. He also does some deep, deep classics from Ray Charles, Frank Sinatra, The Beatles. It is a killer album. Check it out on iTunes. Download it. Old So. You will love it. It's an eight-time Grammy Award winner. Stephen Marley is fantastic. I can't wait for the concert. My wife and I are going to be grooving. And by the way, at the Seminole Casino Hotel in Immokalee, we've got all kinds of performances going on. Chris Jansen, by the way, if you like a little country music, April 25th on a Thursday at the Seminole Center, you can get your tickets. You can buy them now. Uh, we've also... Uh, got besides Stephen Marley, La Mafia, with special guest Macizo. And if you like a little Spanish music, a little Spanish and Spanish rock, by the way, you can buy those tickets and take advantage. They're coming Friday, May 3rd. Billy Currington, also smooth, uh, May 31st on a Friday. You can buy tickets for that. Wayne Newton, the legend Wayne Newton, June first all right so that's a saturday eight o'clock you can see the legend that is wayne newton june 12th the jacksons are coming to town so you can check them out at the seminal center eight o'clock uh john lodge and the music of emerson lake and palmer it's a beautiful thing uh friday august 2nd so if you're an e an elp fan john lodge will be absolutely awesome and hunter hayes Terrific instrumentalist, platinum selling singing artist. Uh, Hayes is absolutely awesome. So check it out. That'll be August 3rd at the Seminole Center. So they've got a lot of acts coming. Stephen Marley, you can use that QR code right there, baby, and uh, take advantage. I will see you there May 4th. I'll be hanging out with the wife and having some fun at the Seminole Casino Hotel in Immokalee. All right. Uh, what do we got? We got some Marino news. Yeah, Dolphin fans, we got a little Marino news. Marino is um is uh going to be making an appearance as a guest speaker. Pretty cool. Marino, the nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback and former. Miami Dolphin is set to be featured on an exclusive keynote panel at the upcoming SBC Summit in North America. Commencing the industry and growth track, the audience with Dan Marino keynote is scheduled to open the second day of the leading iGaming and sports betting event in North America taking place at the Meadowlands Exposition Center in New Jersey, May 7th and, and 9th, or, or May 7th through the 9th. So it's the 8th on the second day. So if you're a Dolphin fan somewhere in the Northeast and you can make your way there, you'll get to see Dan Marino. Maybe, I don't know if you'll get to meet him. Uh, he's going to moderate and do a Q&A session. That's pretty cool. He says, I'm honored to be a keynote speaker at the upcoming SBC Summit, North America, during my playing time in the 80s and 90s. Social media was non-existent and media publications were very rarely provided personal accounts of playing in such a league. 
this will be a fantastic opportunity to shed light on some of the behind the scenes action, as well as the necessary mindset required to compete in a competitive league. So pretty cool uh, for Marino and uh, Razum Sajmark, the CEO and founder of SBC. Uh, said uh, Dan is hugely influ influential figure both in the sporting world and with his charitable organizations. The keynote address will no doubt provide delegates with a unique and exciting opportunity to hear personal accounts from one of sporting's greatest. So just in case, I don't know if you'll be able to get in or whatever, if you can or not, but if you're in the Northeast area and you're a Dan Marino fan and He's going to be the keynote speaker at SBC Summit in North America at the Meadowlands Exposition Center in New Jersey, May 7th through the 9th. All right. So just in case, Marino fans, be prepared. Did you see Travis Kelsey? He got a new gig. He, he got a TV hosting gig. The new version will air on Prime on Amazon Prime, and it's called, it's a spinoff from Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It's Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? He said, I grew up loving game shows, and I'm excited to be following in the footsteps of so many TV icons by hosting my very first one, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? The original show is a great success, so to be bringing a new format with everyone's favorite celebrities to the screens will definitely be entertaining. I'm just happy to be on the hosting side of the equation here and excited how these famous faces keep up. So there you go. Travis Kelsey, baby, preparing for life post-football. God bless him, dude. God bless him. I think that is really, really cool. Uh, let's get to a little music history. By the way, um, producer Jim Steinen was was uh, is celebrating a birthday today. Oh, I'm sorry, not Jim Steinen celebrating a birthday. In music history, producer songwriter Jim Steinen, most famous for his work on Me Love's best selling album Bad Out of Hell, died at the age of 73. His most successful charting singles include Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart. Air Supply is making love out of nothing at all. Meatloaf's I'll Do Anything for Love. And the Sisters of Mercy, The Corrosion. Wow. I did not know Jim Steinman was there for the Sisters of Mercy. This Corrosion. I love it. I'm a Sisters of Mercy fan. I know most of you are like, what is Dominion? What are you talking about? Anyway. Um... What else do we have? In 2014, on this date, the White House refused to comment on a campaign to deport to deport deport Justin Bieber from the U.S. Around 275,000 people had signed a petition on its website calling for the Canadian singer to be removed from the country. I remember that. That was funny. It was really funny. Anyway. Uh, in 98, Robbie Williams started a two-week run on the UK album charts with his, with his debut solo album, Life Through a Lens. The album spent a total of 218 weeks on the UK charts with a sale of 2.4 million albums. It's crazy. In 97, on this date, Michael Jackson attending an unveiling of a wax statue of himself at the Gervin Museum of Wax in Paris, France, Jackson provided one of his own outfits to dress the figure. In 1980, on this date, Blondie went to number one on the U.S. singles charts with Call Me, which was featured in the Richard uh, Gere movie, American Gigolo. So there you go, a little music history. Born on this date in music history, Marion Huge Shug Knight. So Shug, oh, Shug Knight Jr., by the way, Marion Hugh Shug Knight Jr., American record producer, music executive, and jailbird, and co-founder and, co and former CEO of Death Row Records. And just overall scumbag, can we just say? Right? Anyway, 
Um, English singer Tony Martin, best known for fronting Black Sabbath, initially from 87 to 91, and again from 93 to 97. Martin was the band's second longest serving vocalist after Ozzy Osbourne. It's pretty, pretty uh, interesting. Uh, born on this date, 1956, Gary Langan from the English avant garde synth pop group Art of Noise. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, uh, what else? Ah, Bernie Worrell, born on this date in 44, keyboardist and composer, best known as founding member of Parliament Funkadelic for his work also with the Talking Heads. Worrell passed away in June 24th of 2016. Rest in peace. Uh, let's see. Alan Price, born on this date in 42, keyboardist with the Animals. And there you go. And some other birthdays in the entertainment world. Pop singer Lauren Gray is 22. Hayden Christensen, actor, is 43. James Franco is 46. Kate Hudson is 45. Luis Miguel is 54. Tim Curry, movie actor, 78. Candace Parker is 38. Maria Sharapova is 37. James Jane Mansfield was born in this date in 33. We lost her in 67. Joe Hart, soccer player, is 37. Ashley Judd is 56. Rivaldo Ferreira, soccer player, 52. Ali Wong, comedian, is 42. Troy Palomalu is 43. Any wrestlers that I left out there, Sean? Celebrating birthdays today? He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. And he hasn't found it. By the way, Acura of Pembroke Pines. Remember, they've got the spring into performance sales event going on right now. 1.9% financing for 36 months. You can get the 2024 Integra 299, the 2024 RDX 419, the 2024 MDX for 489. All 36 months, 1.9% financing is available to you. They've also got a fleet of certified pre-owned vehicles, a hell of a selection. Right now, the lot is just overflowing with vehicles, which is what you want, because that means they need to sell, sell, sell. They want to get cars off the lot. They're the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States right now. They are killing it, folks. So get on down there to 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75. Tell them that Big O sent you. They will take care of you at Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines. Okay? Um, I love the Panthers' chances. I think they can win it all. Green Lion, Orlando, big crypto guy running against Liz Warren. Um, I mean, dude, Liz Warren is, she's never passed a bill. She's one of the most useless turds that we have in, in, in the Capitol. You know, but just like her is Jim Jordan and AOC and Marjorie Taylor Greene. And, you know, I can keep picking idiots on both sides of the aisle. You know what I'm saying? And Elizabeth Warren is one of the most evil people that there is in, in government. And useless, absolutely useless. Like most people that are there, they're absolutely useless. Every one of them that we put in the White House, the last four clowns we've put in there, you know, useless. Absolutely useless. All they do is screw us over. And so I would love to see a pro-crypto person take down Warren because 
she's married to the banks. You know, but what can I tell you, dude? We got a lot of stupid people in this world because there's a lot of stupid politicians being put in office. So, or being followed. What can I tell you? And Elizabeth Warren, you know, I don't know how they put her in office all the time. Those are dumbass people that keep voting that 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 turd in there. So that's my two cents. What can I tell you? Um, let's see. Uh, I remember game five two years ago when Jimmy was hurt against Boston and Bam bailed us out. Seems like a decade ago. Yeah, dude. Every you know, the sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while. I I I remember when um what was the name of the other butler we had here? The uh, the poor kid that uh, he had some mental issues that we picked him in the first round. God, what was his first name? It was another butler. Well, he scored 51 points one night. You know. What was the name? You're not talking about Karam Butler, are you? No. Or maybe it wasn't a butler. I thought it was a butler. It was it was a couple years right after the guy that got lost on the boat. Um and I think he's no longer with us too. Not Karan. No, no, Karan was a good player. Um maybe it wasn't Butler. Was it Walker? Was it? I got to look now at the history of Heat first-round picks. He was a lanky guy. He was like 6'7", 6'8", small forward, can shoot. Um, Odom. It was right after Alec Kessler. It's like within within a year or two of Alec, Willie Burton. There it is. Got it. Got it. Willie Burton. Willie Burton scored 51 points. What does that mean? You know what I mean? It's not a big deal, bro. Willie Burton was the guy that I was talking about. Wasn't mentally stable either. I remember I was told the story once that... Uh, he like stood up in the middle of the bench in the middle of a game and said, the world is falling on me. And then he sat back down and they were all like, what? Anyway. So yeah. Um, you know, hopefully the sun will shine on somebody's ass today. I remember, uh, what was his name? Uh, Kevin Edwards. I remember Kevin Edwards in a game once where they broke his nose. Okay. I don't know what the opponent was. I forgot exactly which opponent it was. And Kevin Edwards came out in the second half with this, you know, brace on to protect his nose. And I swear to you, he, he was on a mission. He was dunking on people, driving in the lane, doing all kinds of, we're like, whoa, what the Oh, break his nose more often. Can, can you? Because Kevin Edwards was a mild-mannered young man. They drafted out of DePaul, I believe, years back. And um, hell, I, did he end up playing some with Rod Strickland? Was was they were they the backcourt? I think might have been for DePaul for a short time. Maybe not the whole four years, but I think they might have had a crossover or whatever. But anyway, so. Um, So Kevin was a, a a super nice young man, you know. He wasn't like uh, he wasn't a show off or anything like that. And it was the first time I had ever seen like a it. You could tell he was a mad player, and he had like a night like you're like, holy shit, dude! You know, like wow, can that guy show up a lot more? You know, and they all have their moments. And that's Bam Adebayo and, you know, others. They'll have some moments. But 
they never feel like having that moment all the time. They're never demanding to have that moment all the time. And that's their problem. That's why they're not wired like a star. That's the thing. So that's what takes away from it. Because you're not wired that way. Uh, Roja says, I don't think Pearl Jam has any Florida dates for the new album tour. Yeah, they don't. I have to see if I can fly out. What about you? Yeah, I'd like to see them. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I can't, I, I, I only do specific traveling now the last couple of years. I've limited my uh, my travel only because of, you know, my investing. Because uh, I used to travel a lot more for concerts. But that will change in 2025. That will change in 2025. I will be traveling a lot more when I get out. So, but uh, anyway, yeah. Um, I would like to go. Dude, I was set for Pearl Jam two nights in Oakland before the draft, before the pandemic. Pandemic hit, they canceled the draft in, in Vegas and all that stuff. And we were, we were going to Oakland for two nights to see Pearl Jam. Then the next day we were traveling, which was a, a Sunday, I believe, and we were gonna go to Vegas and it was the week of the draft. It was, and, and that week I was also going to see April Wine and I had to sell off those tickets. And now he retired. So I got fucked. I only got to see April Wine once back in the day in the 80s. Um, I had tickets for another concert in Vegas that week. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, God, I was so pissed, man. The pandemic effed me like all of us in many different ways, financially and socially and all kinds of stuff. But I had back to back nights in Oakland, ready to go to see Pearl jam and then go to Vegas for the draft. What an effing. I mean, that was going to be one of the greatest weeks of my life. Cause there was so much going on, you know, and that was one of those drafts, Shit, was that the draft of uh, Tua and all that? It might have been, too. It might have been the Tua draft. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, it was just, it just sucks. It sucks. So I, I just, you know, and I've seen Pearl Jam. It's not like I haven't seen Pearl Jam a few times, but, yeah, we were already set. We had great seats for both nights. Going to hang out in San Fran for a couple nights. Hang out. I, I remember where I was going to hook up with NorCal because I think NorCal was still living, I think, in that area at that time. Not that he would go see. I don't think he's a Pearl Jam guy. I think he hates Pearl Jam. But, yeah. Uh, Ocala Joe says, Orlando, I wonder what happened to the players that played as hard on the first game of the season as well as game seven of the finals. They might have won the championship. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, the Heat didn't have enough to win a championship any of these years because they only have one star. But taking a season off is not the way to go about it. And it finally caught up to them. They got lucky last year, dude. They got the break with Giannis and all that kind of stuff. And things went their way. And they, they you know, and he thought he could do that bullshit again. And he got burnt. You know, a decado can only go so far, and it's over. New Pearl Jam album is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, did you ever get the Grateful Dead con? Uh, oh, I'm not a I'm not a Grateful Dead con. I'm not a Grateful Dead guy. So, missing Grateful Dead didn't mean shit to me. You know what I mean? So. I like a couple of their songs, but I'm not the guy that, oh, my God, I got to see Grateful Dead. Doesn't do that much for me. I have friends of mine that are big Grateful Dead fans, and I like them, but not that way. So, no, I had plenty of opportunity to see Grateful Dead, and I 
never really was interested. So it's not for me at least, it's not a big deal that I missed them. Um Big O, the Hall of Famer, uh Jam Phil Collins, non point with Carly tonight. I love the original, but after Hurricane Ivan displaced us in 2004, I heard the non-point version in Peoria, Illinois. It kicks ass. Yeah, no, non-point is fantastic, bro. I like non-point. I've seen non-point in concert. They're good. They're good. I like them. Eddie Lepp says, it was. I was planning on going to the draft as well. I had airline hotel tickets. I was going to hang out with you guys at Tommy Rockers. Bummed. So it was the Tua draft, see? Dude, that would have been such a great, 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 great. It was like really a 10-day thing. It was going to be such heaven for me, dude. Everything. We get Tua. I get to see Pearl Jam. I get to see April Wine. I'm in Vegas for a week. I, got, I was in San Fran for a weekend. I mean, are you kidding me? That was going to be heaven, dude. There was another concert that I'm forgetting and a big one that week that I was going to see in Vegas. And I, and I can't remember, but I had tickets for another concert that week in Vegas that I couldn't go to. I mean, it was really, it was just like, I was going to have the week of all weeks, dude. It was just going to be one of those like, yeah, this is top five right here. This is top five. My favorite team finally gets their QB. I see Pearl Jam twice in, in Oakland. Too much. Would have been too much. We get to do shows all week long at Tommy Rockers. Are you kidding me, dude? It doesn't get better than that. You know? Would have been freaking great. Would have been perfect. What do we got going on? What do we got going on? So where's Bitcoin at right now? Let's see. 64,488. So it shot up after dipping yesterday to 64.65. And we are officially eight hours, 22 minutes away from the halving. We are 56 blocks away. All right, 56 blocks away from the halving. That is freaking cool as hell. It is scheduled right now around 8.29 p.m. So right around there. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks and over the next two months um, when post-halving. It's going to be really, really interesting, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, you see the new track and field unis? They're, they're, they're stirring it up, man. The ladies. Uh, ladies. You, um, you got to be like. Your hygiene's got to be perfect. Seriously, they kind of went a little risque on these. Okay? These are the, the track and field uniforms for men and women. And that uh, that that V cut there is kind of, uh, you know? You know what I'm saying? So it, it's kind of a an interesting thing here. Here, here you go. Here's Anna Cockrell, and she's wearing it, and uh, it doesn't leave much for the imagination. I mean, it's pretty much all skin. It's like wearing a bikini while you're running. Okay. Interesting. Here's the here's the example for men and women. Uh and and here's Shikari, I'm sorry. Here's Shikari wearing. Now, Shikari is wearing it with some pants. So, that's probably what the girls are going to do, which is the smart thing. 
Okay. By the way, once again, I'll mention it. Proud of Shikari. Proud of her. Because a couple of years back, she was acting like such a douche. Even when she would lose, she wasn't professional with her opponents and grace and graceful or gracious. And uh, she's done a lot of growing up in the last year. And now she handles success. She's not really handling a lot of defeat because she's not being defeated much anymore. And I think it's that new attitude she has now. You know, she's kind of risen above all of that. So kudos to Shikari because she was not headed down the right path a few years back. And now she's, you know, hopefully she continues down that path. But, man, she's a star. She's a star. She carries herself the right way. She'll have endorsement deals and all kinds of stuff to set herself up. If she acts like she was acting a few years back, she won't attract nearly as many people. You know what I mean? But she's acted professional now, which is really, really cool. You know? And so, and we've got a great chance to take gold. We've got a great, I don't know if some of you, you probably don't keep up with track and field. I, I kind of follow track and field and, and uh and and watch all the races and things like that uh and it's easy too on youtube it's really easy because they break it down for you and if you already have like it in your algorithm it'll pop up automatically so it's actually really really cool but yeah uh, i would imagine that shikari kind of gave us a little view that they're not going to wear it the way you know they first displayed it it's kind of it like wow dude that's kind of like a bikini you better not forget to shave at all. Jesus. So, uh, have you ever listened to the Dave Matthews band? Yes, I have. I like Dave Matthews. Um, I'm not a fanatic of Dave Matthews. Now, Dave Matthew fans are fanatical. They're a jam band, which is great because you never get the same concert twice. Um, but I've only seen them once, and that will be the only time I will ever see Dave Matthews again. It's like, like I saw him and I'm good. And that's it. I'm good. I don't really need to see Dave Matthews again. So yeah, I've seen him. It was a good concert. And I can say I saw Dave Matthews. But that's about it. I'm not like this big Dave Matthews guy. Um, they cover the men and strip the women. Well, you know. Uh, she was young and immature. Hopefully we all grow up like she has. Well, I don't, but she's grown up a lot more than I have. I, I'm telling you, I'm super proud of Shikari because she was not headed in the right path. She was not carrying herself. She's too talented to, to not carry herself the right way, bro. You know, carry yourself the right way so you can cash in and take advantage and people can really, you know, enjoy you know, your skills, you know, and, uh, and she's doing that now. She has a much more, uh, brighter attitude, even when she does the interviews and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool to see. It's really cool to see because it was kind of a turnoff when she, you know, you're not, you're not, you lose and you're not gracious. You're not respectful to your opponent that won and all that. That's just not right. And you got to rise above that. You know, I get it. She's probably frustrated that she lost. Because she demands greatness from herself, which that's what all great athletes do. And she's a great athlete, dude. Great athlete. She can fly, man. Seriously. She is fun to watch. She's willing to work, unlike the Cavender twins. Okay? Hey, one more thing uh, before I go, because I... I noticed this after, and it, it, I, I guess I didn't pay attention to it nearly as much. I didn't do it. Maybe I'll do it one day. I don't know. But I didn't like, oh, my God, I was so disgusted by it like others were. But I did say I'm not doing it, and I haven't done it. Um, how many people did you see complain about paying for a blue check mark? And then they went and paid for the blue check mark. I saw a ton of people. Oh, my God. I got to pay. For, 
no, this is wrong. This that boom, and and now I, 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 I start to remember those people, and then I see them on Twitter now, and I see the blue check mark. Listen, it's probably to your benefit to pay for it, because you'll probably come up more on search engines and all that. Because that's what he's going to do. He's going to rig it that way, you know. And if you talk bad about him, I'll probably hold it against you. And if you don't pay for the blue check mark, you probably won't have the same luxuries and all that kind of stuff. And so you know, it probably benefits you to do all those kind of things. Um, but I found it funny that after hearing all these people that were disgusted by the blue check mark, local, normal people, celebrities, whatever, and they all end up paying for the blue check mark. Pretty much. For talking all that shit they gave in. All right, we thank David Fronis. We thank Manny Navarro, as always. We thank Sean Stanley for mastering this entire platform every single day. We thank all of you for tuning in. Those of you that send in a super chat, you can send in a, a um, cash app or Venmo donation. Cash Big O Show. That's Cash Big O Show if you want to make a donation anytime, anywhere. And, of course, you can always make a Bitcoin donation. Having, we are eight hours and 14 minutes away from the having. 56 blocks away, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll see what happens. We will talk on Monday. You all be good out there. We'll see you Monday. Same time, same place, same bat channel.